All right, in this lesson, we're going to go over methods that a corporation can use when reporting an investment in another corporation. Now, the key word that I want you to understand when you're viewing this lesson is the word control. How much control does an organization have on the investee? So the investor has control on the investee. How much control do they have? And really, we have three ways that we can think about this. Um, they have no control, so they really just invest their money and they really don't have any say. Um, a significant amount of control, um, and that might be, be because they have a close enough relationship where they can have control of the organization, but they don't have full control of the organization. And then the third way is we can have full control of the organization, um, almost like a parent sub. Now, under GAAP, we have these percentages that help us get to the answer when it comes to control. Now, the one thing that you should know when you're thinking about this lesson is that it's not necessarily, hey, if they have 18%, we need to do it this way. If they have 25, we need to do it this way. And then if we um, have 60% ownership, we should do it this way. These are guides or guidelines that we should follow but it really comes down to the idea of control the investor has of the investee. Now there's three methods of reporting. We're not gonna go through um, all the intricate ways that we use these, but we're gonna give you an overview of the three ways that we can report an investor's investment in an investee. So the first one is the fair value method. And the fair value method basically comes down to we're going to report our investment in the investee at the fair market value. Now, the fair market value may be a hard number to get. The reason why it might be a hard number to get is if it's not traded at a public exchange, we don't actually know what the market value is any given day. So if we bought a private company, we own less than 10%, we need to use the fair value. We might not actually know what the fair value of that corporation is at the end of the year. One key difference that you'll know is that when we talk about dividends though, we report dividends as income when we receive it. So um, unlike the other ones where we might do some other quirky things about it, with fair value, when we receive the dividends, it becomes income to us. Now, one mechanism of saying of using fair value is that if our voting shares is less than 20%, then we use the fair value method, okay? Now, the next one that we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the other side of the spectrum. So on one side of the spectrum, we've got the fair value. On the other side of the spectrum, we have consolidations. Consolidations are typically used for organizations in which the investor uh, has more than 50% of the voting rights, which means they have a control over the organization or the investee, okay? Now, consolidation is pretty simple to understand. It's not necessarily simple to do, but when we say consolidation, what we mean is we have two financial statements of two organizations. We've got the investor and the investee. Consolidation means that we take the in financial statements from the investee and we merge them in with the investor. So now we have one complete financial statement for two organizations. That's what we mean by consolidations. We're consolidating the investees into the investor's financial statements, even if the shares are less than 100%, okay? So even if, uh, the investor owns 80% and someone else owns 20%, we still consolidate the entire financial statements into the investor, and then we'll do some adjustments at the end of the income statement or the balance sheet to show what part is not owned by that investor. So consolidation, really easy to understand. We're taking investor, investees, financial statements, merging them together, and then we will put um, a, a, a note or a balance that shows the amount that the investor does not actually own. And then the last one is kind of in the middle. 
In the middle would be your equity method. So if it doesn't meet the fair value and it doesn't meet consolidation, then it is the equity method. The equity method, we kind of do something different when it comes to the actual equity balance or our equity or our investment in the investee. We're going to move that balance up and down as we receive income or as we report income from the investee and as we receive and report dividends from the investee. So that one um, is a little bit different, but that's kind of the middle ground. So if we own um, or if the investor has 20% or more up to 50% of the voting share, which means it doesn't have absolute control, it, has, it can't have significant control, um, then we use the equity method. Now, control doesn't necessarily mean profit and loss split. And let me tell you why. Um, in, an organization could technically have a 50-50 uh, profit split, but the voting share rights might be 70-30. And so, Understanding that control doesn't necessarily mean what their ownership. And so um, this is key here. That's why you say voting share, not ownership, because the voting shares are probably more important than the ownership percentages. And when I mean ownership possession, uh, percentages, I mean profit and loss split. So uh, once again, when we talk about control and the entities, the investors control on the investee, we don't necessarily mean profit and loss split. Um, typically there may be something drawn that says that because they have a class B share instead of a class A share or because they have common stock versus a common B shares um, that they get these rights that everybody else doesn't get. And so that's an important one. So when we're evaluating an investor's investment in an investee, we're looking at control. Do they have really no control, a lot of control, all the control or kind of in the middle? Okay. Now, some of the questions that you should ask yourself or some of the things that you should think about when we're talking about control. How do we evaluate control? Well, these are, uh, these are six things that you should probably think about, and there's probably many more. Not one is more important than the other. So, investors' representation on the board of directors of the investee. Well, if the investors has, let's say, five of the nine seats, we would say that they would have control over that investee. Investors' participation in the policy making process of the investee. So maybe the investor doesn't have a ton of seats, but they have significant influences on the policy making decisions of the investee. Uh, material intra entity transaction. So, what we're talking about here is how much transaction is from the investee to the investor and the investor to the investee, whereas investee to an outside party. Okay, so if the investor, let's say, buys out another company for the purposes of helping the investor and their goods, and there's very little transaction happening from the investee to the outside world, then we can say that control might be with the investor rather than the investee. Um, interchange of managerial personnel, so how close and connected are our personnel where our personnel as the investor goes to the investee and works there or vice versa. And then technological dependencies, um, the investor might have a lot of the technological uh, technology aspects that the investee would like um, and they are using a lot of that techno tech technology to achieve their goals. So how dependent is the investee on the investor's technology? And then the extent of ownership by the investor in relationship to the size and concentration of other ownership interests in the investee. That kind of comes down to all of this right here. You know, how, what percentages does that investor have with the investee versus the investee with the other investors? So. Um, at the end of the day, these are our three ways that we can merge our financials or merge or um, acquire into our books the investee, in, investor's investment on the investee. Um, in the next video or next lesson, we're going to talk more about um, the equity method in particular.